Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to a new screencast lecture. Today we're going to be continuing and finalizing our previous lecture, Phases of Matter, Gas. This is part two. If you haven't checked out part one yet, give it a shot. Let's picture how particles in all three phases of matter would look and behave. This is solid. You see the particles in a solid are staying in the same position. They're vibrating in place. You can see them vibrating, vibrating. However, they're not changing position. For example, this particle is not moving over here. This particle is not moving over there. They're staying in position relative to one another. Solid. Take a look at a liquid. Liquids are also packed relatively close together. They are in motion. And more importantly, they can change position. They're not all going the same rate of speed. This one is going slower than this one. However, they are in motion. They are able to flow. The particles can move past one another and change position. And finally, gas. You can see gas is at a very, very high level of energy. You have the particles spreading out as far as they can go. If the container is open, they're going to leave the container, moving very fast, spread farther apart, obviously changing position. Now, the next clip is a model of the motion of particles in solids, liquids, and gases. Look for the differences and how close together they are whether or not the particles are changing position, and the differences in speed the particles are traveling relative to one another. So solid versus liquid versus gas. Let's check it out. You probably have heard the term water vapor. Well, let's find out a definition for the term vapor. First of all, vapor is matter in a gaseous state that is usually a liquid or solid at room temperature. For example, water is normally a liquid at room temperature. That's why you would have what's called water vapor when you have the liquid water evaporating into a gas. This next clip discusses how geysers are formed. Have you ever visited a geyser? Where were you? Would you like to share your experience with others? Let us know down in the comments section. A geyser just went off in Yellowstone National Park and it's kind of a big deal. The term geyser comes from the Icelandic word to gush, which is a carryover from a discovery of one in 1294, which is the oldest on our planet. Geysers aren't just water volcanoes. They're more like nature's tea kettles. It requires a precise mix of conditions to make them work, which explains why they appear in groups called fields. Over half of the world's geysers are in Yellowstone National Park, including the largest, as in the most powerful, which is not Old Faithful, by the way. It's the Steamboat Geyser. This fella can spew hot vapors and steam 400 feet into the air, but as a catch, it only does so sporadically. Last Wednesday, it erupted for the first time in eight years. The spewing just went on and on. It was 300 feet high, and it went for 24 hours straight. A geyser needs a heat source. Geothermal energy comes from within the Earth, and the reason geysers come in groups is because they're sitting on top of a high concentration of that energy. The balancing act comes in because of the heat and pressure. As the water heats near the magma, a small amount will squirt from the surface, releasing that pressure. But if the heat builds up too much, the boiling overwhelms the pressure of the rock, and then an eruption of steam happens. Woo! The steam quickly expands to 1,500 times the original volume of the water, and the eruption will continue until the geyser is dried out, or until the heat and the pressure of the Earth goes back into a balance, and then we get that trickling water again. It is crazy cool, to put it just right. Now that we know how geysers work, that other more famous Yellowstone geyser makes more sense. Old Faithful gets its name because that particular one erupts about every 45 to 110 minutes. It must have a constant level of heat and pressure under there, so it keeps itself fairly balanced. If you were gonna visit, You'd probably see that one, but not the steamboat geyser go off because it took 50 years to erupt once. It may not go off again for a while. Water vapor, steam, what can we use it for? We can use steam for cleaning. Here you see a carpet cleaner using steam. 
can be used for getting rid of wrinkles and curtains and cloth. Uh, I've seen it being used at department stores where they use the steam to get rid of wrinkles on the clothing as they're hanging on the on the on the hangers. At home, you can use an iron to take wrinkles out of your clothes. Water vapor can be used for increasing the humidity in a dry room. You're often going to want to do this in winter. You may have noticed that in the winter, sometimes you get more nosebleeds. That could be due to the fact that the air is more dry and it dries out your uh, nasal passages. Steam can be used to power a steam engine, like in this old-fashioned steam engine train. This here you see, that's steam coming out. And this, this is smoke. This is pollution from burning of coal or wood. Steam can be used to spin a turbine, which moves a generator, which produces electricity. This, most of the electricity that we use is produced by making steam of some sort and having that steam move a turbine, spin a turbine, which then moves a generator, which then induces electricity. Good stuff. This is not pollution. This is steam. It's water vapor. Let's look at a couple of unusual properties of solids and liquids. First of all, again, real quick, if you see a solid, a solid has its shape. It stays its own shape. It is a definite shape. It is a definite volume. It does not change shape. It does not change volume, depending on which container you put it in. Liquids have indefinite shape. It will change the, sh the shape to its container. However, its volume stays the same. And gas, gas is going to change its shape depending on the container. Also, it's going to change its volume. It's going to spread out as much as it can depending on the container. Let's take a look at this photo. You see this woman, she's holding a jar lid underneath hot water. Why would she do this? Well, she's probably having three, two, one. Well, she's probably having a hard time unscrewing the lid. It's gonna, it's too tight for her. So what she does is she holds it under hot water to help loosen the lid. Why does that? Why does that help? We know that most solids will expand as they get warmer. We saw that with the ball and ring demonstration, where you heated up the ring, the ring expanded, and the ball was able to fit through the ring. You can do the same thing with this jar. If you heat up the lid, the lid will expand a little bit. You can't really see it, but it will loosen it up, and you should be able to unscrew the jar. The next clip is a demo showing the expansion of metal when its thermal energy is increased. What I have here is I have a ball and a ring. Notice they don't fit together. All right, I can't fit them together. This one does. Woo. Okay. So that one goes through. Any questions? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this ring in the flame. Well, let's find out. Hopefully. If it doesn't, then my, my demonstration is kaput. All right, so I'm just going to hold this in there. Clearly, this is probably getting hot. I'm not going to touch it unless I want an O brand on my skin. Ow! 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, did you see that burn? Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Ow, that hurts. And you said you weren't going to touch it. I wasn't planning on touching it. Wow, you guys got a special bonus treat today. Oh, I didn't see it. I turned around. You didn't see it, but hopefully it's on camera. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Okay, well, the important thing is, is that it actually did work. Okay, so that's exciting. So now it's kind of stuck on there. <laughs> so what would I need to do to get it unstuck? I need to heat it up again, which I'm not going to do because my finger is in pain. All right, so um, we'll, uh, we'll hold off on fixing that until a later time. Ow. Okay, thanks. That was fun. That was a great clip. <laughs> I certainly did enjoy burning myself, but it's for science, right?
Here we just saw that metals expand as they get hotter. Well, the opposite is true also. So most solids will shrink as they get colder. Water is very unusual because water will increase in volume when changing from a liquid to a solid. That's very, very unusual. Weird stuff. Here in this photo, you see this jar. It was filled up to the top with water. As the water freezes, you can see how it's starting to actually go above the jar level. It kind of bows out on top. Frozen or solid water is less dense than liquid water. So solid water will float. The reason why it's less dense is that it's the same amount of matter, but as it solidifies, it increases its volume. It gets bigger in size. It gets increased in volume. Therefore, the density will decrease. The mass stays the same. The volume increases. Density is mass divided by volume, so the density is going to de decrease. That's why you probably have noticed that ice cubes will float in your glass of water. This is actually a really good thing. It's a great physical characteristic of water that it expands as it freezes, which makes it less dense. Here's why. Frozen water is less dense than liquid water, so solid water will float, okay? So here you see an iceberg. Now, it's not a real picture, but it's uh, you can see that the water, the frozen solid water, is floating in the liquid water. And this is key to these fish's survival because the water on the top of the pond will freeze. So up here, this water is going to freeze up here in the winter. And the fish below, down here, the temperature, oops, three, two, one. This will solidify on top, and the liquid water below that ice level will stay liquid, which allows the fish to live. If ice were to sink, this layer would freeze. It would then sink to the bottom, and then the liquid water on top would freeze, and that would sink to the bottom, and the liquid water up here would freeze, and so on and so forth, and you would get this whole pond eventually would freeze solid. That fish isn't going to do real well in a solid block of ice. However, there are some problems that could... That this feature can cause for us. A common one, unfortunately, is this. Here you see a pipe burst as it, gets, as it gets cold. So you have water in your pipes. If the water freezes, again, it's going to expand and it can make the pipe break. And then you've got a real problem. Here you can see a close-up of a pipe that was cracked open by water freezing inside of it. As I was saying, three, two, one. As I was saying, most substances will expand or get larger in volume as they change from a solid to a liquid. In addition, most substances expand, get larger in volume as they change from a liquid to a gas. This next clip is a demo showing the very unusual phenomenon of liquid water expanding as it becomes solid water. The volume of water increases as it changes from phase liquid to phase solid. With us a couple years ago, a gunshot that she said that happened in the garage. In, in the middle of the night when she goes out there, it looked like there was snow all over. She thought that the roof had caved in. It was just a soda bottle that had exploded. <laughs> exploded. But here's how it explodes is that uh, this freezes, of course, these horrible temperatures, yeah. and this starts to puff up. So the bottom puffs out. It fell off the shelf. Uh, and when it hits the bottom, like and this, is, this goes off like a gunshot. Yeah, so, but uh, you look at this and you go, flimsy plastic. This, there's no way that can explode. No, no. Look at a that. tough, That's galvanized. Gal a nice steel How pipe. Thick do you think that is? That's probably a quarter of an inch. Absolutely. So yeah. there's no way that. Well, that's not exactly true. So in the lab, uh, look at what we did just a little earlier today. Watch this. Okay. 
So the experiment starts with a piece of cast iron pipe, uh, a small little elbow. It goes down like this. You can notice we're trying to get all the bubbles out, so no bubbles at all. We twist this fitting in place and secure it. And this is our pipe that we're going to submerge to the cold temperature. All right, so the pipe filled with water is submerged in liquid nitrogen, which is 320 degrees below zero. This is just going to speed up the freezing process. Now, most liquids will shrink, actually get smaller when cooled. Water is a little bit different because water does shrink when it first gets cold, but then it actually expands until the temperature is reached of about four degrees Celsius. And then when it finally freezes, it has an explosive expansion to almost 9%, and you get something that looks like this. Oh, is that amazing? Gosh. Did you see that flash of light? Like a gun, it was like a gunshot. Yeah, well, that flash of light wasn't lightning. It took out one of the lights in the oh. studio. Oh, <laughs> so no. we were all way, way, way back oh. and let that thing go for a second. Just this pieces. is the result. Now, the viewers at home need to understand this was just water that was inside. So this is what happens when it freezes. And, you, and, and water is this amazing substance. Everything else shrinks. When it gets cold, water will expand. And when it hits about 4 degrees Celsius, that's when you get that next level of expansion and then Bam, when it finally man, gets that oh freezing point, just nine percent, and that's just—I mean—it's an explode. Almost sounds like a little grenade yeah, going off. Yeah. Some more effects of liquid water expanding as it becomes solid water that you may have experienced. You probably have seen rocks like this. Maybe you see cracks in rocks. This is caused by liquid water getting into a crack. The liquid water freezes and expands and makes the crack a little bit bigger. When the crack gets a little bit bigger, well, then more water can come in. That water can freeze, solidify, expand, and keep making that crack bigger and bigger. And eventually, the rock itself can split through completely. Around here, we have a lot of potholes. That's because we have winter. So if you ever live far down south where they generally don't have a lot of winter, they generally don't have a lot of potholes. And the, the big reason is, is that just like I was telling you with the, wa with the water and the rocks, water can get into a crack in the road, that water freezes, expands, makes the crack bigger, more liquid water comes in, the water freezes, expands, makes the crack bigger, and so forth, and you end up with this big mess, potholes. There's liquid water in a lot of different things. Here's an egg that froze, and it expanded and broke the eggshell. And this one probably has happened to you. Uh, if you ever left your cans of soda in your car overnight uh, on a very, very cold night, it may have expanded. It may have even burst and shot soda all over the back of your car. Not pleasant. It's definitely happened to me. Put in the comments if you have experiences like this. Well, that's all the new stuff that we have for today. So let's do a quick review of concepts that we've learned so far. Let's see how well you do. First question, anything that has mass and occupies space is... Matter. All matter is made up of tiny particles, and these particles are in motion. This quote is known as particle theory. List four states of matter. Well, you should know solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. There's more, but those are the ones we're worried about. Let's define solids. Solids have blank shape and blank volume. They have definite shape and definite volume. Liquids, blank shape and blank volume. Liquids have indefinite shape and definite volume. Gases, blank shape and blank volume. Well, gases have indefinite shape and indefinite volume. Solids arranged in repeating patterns are called what? What type of solid? Crystal and solid. Solids with particles in random arrangements, so non-crystalline solids, are called amorphous solids. Resistance to flow of liquid is called viscosity. Blank causes a liquid to act as if it has a thin film stretched across its surface. That would be surface tension. Matter in a gas state that is usually a liquid or a solid at room temperature is called... That's correct, it's vapor. And to change phases, you must increase or decrease the amount of blank 
in the substance. And that's energy, or you could even say thermal energy. And of course, you should be able to draw particles showing the motion and position of particles in a solid, liquid, and gas. This is a solid, particles relatively close together, vibrating in place, not changing position. Liquids, you're going to show particles moving around, can change position, but are limited to the surface. And the gas should be going all over the place, all right? It's going to be able to expand throughout the entire container. In this case, the container's open, so they'll be able to escape. Well, that's all we have for you today. Hope you learned something, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.